I am paying $1,400 per year for only to buy this trading data that gives me a full understanding on every single order in the markets. If it's one big order or if it's more small orders, this is not just any order flow data. This is what is known as a market by order data feed. And if you have a platform that can properly interpret these data, it can give you a huge informational advantage on all other price action retail traders out there. Let's see how this works. Uh, by the way, this is one of a series of videos I'm making about order flow. It's a full course, so I'll leave you the playlist down below. I hope everything was clear. If it wasn't, go back and see the first videos that I made about this order flow course. If you like this video, leave a like and a comment if you have any question and subscribe to the channel to see the next videos. And that's it. Ciao. Just a quick recap on market mechanics. We have two types of liquidity. The one in the order book is passive liquidity. Buy limits in the bid and sell limits in the ask. The first two levels are the best bid and the best ask. Then you have aggressive liquidity, which is basically market buyers and market sellers, aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers, which buy or sell at the best bid or at the best ask the contracts that are available in the book. Once this liquidity has been consumed, the new best bid and best ask can vary. And this is how price eventually moves. And price moves exactly where the last orders are executed. So if five more contracts were executed here right now, the candle will turn green. So with this visualization of order flow, we already have a deeper layer of information than pure price action, but still we're only scratching the surface of the information that order flow can actually provide. Because with this form of order flow, we're just seeing the market in every price level. That's why this form of order flow is also known as market by price, because you're seeing the market per every level of price. So market by price order flow only shows us the total number of resting orders at which price level and the total number of aggressive orders at which price level. But if say we have 100 contracts here and 100 contracts here, we don't know if it's one big order for 100 contracts, two big orders of 50 contracts or 100 different orders worth one contract each because we only know the total number at a price level. Market by orders data feed instead doesn't only show us the market per every price, but also the market in every single order. So maybe for those 100 contracts, there's going to be another 40 contracts order here, plus a 10 contracts order here and another 10 contracts order here. So with market by order data feeds, we have a granular understanding of order flow. And we can see with a much higher accuracy how big participants, how smart money are manipulating order flow. But in order to understand how this can actually help us, you should first know about matching algorithms. Every exchange matching algorithms are basically automatic rules that determines the interaction between aggressive orders and resting orders. And these are all the orders in the best bid. So say we have 15 contracts here, 5 contracts here, and 35 contracts contracts here, which means we have one order for 15 contracts, one order for five contracts, and an order for 35 contracts. And there's a 23 contracts order that was just sent to the exchange. And now matching algorithms has to pair with all the contracts available in the resting orders here. The first and most common matching algorithm is known as FIFO or FIFO or FIFO, which stands for first in, first out. So the first contracts that was put in the book is going to be the first order to be executed as soon as someone buys or sells. So in this case, chronologically speaking, first this 15 contract order was placed here, then this five contracts order, and then this 35 contracts order. So if this aggressor comes in, who has the right to be executed first? Of course, this one, because it was put here before the rest of the orders. So 15 contracts of this order will be executed here, which means now there's still 18 contracts in this order that needs to be processed at the best bid. Now, five of these contracts will be paired with these five contracts contracts here, which leaves us with 13 contracts. Now these 13 contracts will be matched with 13 of these 35 contracts in this order. So regardless of the size of the aggressor order, the first resting order which was put in the bid is going to be executed first. This is the most common matching algorithm. Then you have also FIFO with LMM, which means FIFO with lead market maker. This usually, which means that the exchange has a deal with the particular operator that operates in that market with one or more market participants that are acting as a lead market maker. And what they do is basically being sure that every level of the book has liquidity. So they place their orders in every level of the book to ensure that all aggressors are going to find
find liquidity. So since they provide this service to the exchange and they help make the market more liquid and more easy to trade, they have the right to be executed first, at least at some level. And you could ask yourself, what is the business? Why do they provide liquidity? Because the business model of a market maker is to earn one tick for every transaction that is happening. So basically, they are buying here, they are selling here. This is one tick. So if, for example, we're talking about the ES contract, they're going to earn $12.5 for every contract they bought and sold every time the price moves at least one tick. So the best market condition for a market maker to be in the market is when price is basically still and when price does this. Or in a bigger picture, if price consolidates, they're mostly in profit. The worst moment for a market maker to be on the market is when price is extremely directional and extremely volatile. That's why market makers usually withdraw their order from the order book in the milliseconds right before and right after a macroeconomic data release. So when NFP, when CPI comes out, one of the reasons why price moves so high, it's not only because there's a lot of aggression and a lot of new position being taken, but also because there's no market makers, there's no liquidity. And if you normally would have a very thick book, both on the bid, both on the ask, in the seconds before and after news, you will see the book almost completely empty. And this happens in every market. If we're talking about market that has FIFO with lead market maker, the market maker is allowed to withdraw their order from the book just in that very small window of time. If you want to get deep into the technical details, you can check more in the CME website. Now back to our market by order data feed. With market by order, we can access this level of information. So the relationship with every single little order. This happens because every aggressor order has an ID and every resting order has an ID. So we have aggressor orders IDs and resting order ID, which is a little code that identifies that particular order. And the best example to understand why this can be useful is when an iceberg order is put into the market. Now, what is an iceberg order, you might ask? An iceberg order, just like an iceberg, is an order where you can only see the tip, but you can't see that actually it's a huge piece of order. So an iceberg order is a really big order. We can say a 2000 contract order, but if a big market participant would put one singular 2000 contract order on a price level, the market is very unlikely to try and attack it. It would scare all market participants. So to avoid this, they only put, say, 20 contracts, just the tip of the iceberg. And every time those 20 contracts are executed by an aggressor, they immediately pop back up and they're constantly being reloaded every time 20 contracts are executed. Let me show you an example. This is an example of an iceberg order I have recorded in my order flow platform. And as you can see, when price reaches this level, there is exactly 36 contracts here in the book. But we can already see that hundreds of contracts has been executed at this level. So as you can see, more and more orders are being executed here, but still in the book, there's very few contracts. And as sellers keep pushing and selling of that level, all the contracts here are constantly being added and reloaded again and again and again and again. More and more contracts are executed at this price level. This shows that there is a big market participants behind this level constantly reloading orders and absorbing all the sellers pressure. In every iceberg is very typical that you will find a bunch of small bubbles. Then market eventually will give up on attacking that level because there's a wall and price will eventually move back up. In one of the next videos, we will go deep in also how to trade this pattern. So in that level of the book, this big market participant is constantly reloading orders. And there is two types of icebergs. So let's say that behind here, we figure out that there might be an iceberg order and we want to sell this. There's two ways to do it. We can whether sell market on this level or put a sell limit on this level. If we sell market, we are guaranteed to be filled. If we put our sell limit here, so we want to sell exactly at the level where this big participant is selling, there is two options. Whether this iceberg is the same order. So it's the same order ID. Just quantity is constantly being updated, in which case we're talking about a native iceberg, or it's a bunch of different resting order that have different order IDs, which is also known as synthetic iceberg. Native icebergs are usually provided by the exchange. Synthetic icebergs are usually the ones that these big market participants build for themselves. And with the native icebergs, you are being more easily seenable by other market participants because they can see that it's the same big order being constantly updated in its quantity. But the other participants 
students can be immediately sure it's an iceberg order. With synthetic icebergs, you can't be 100% sure it's an actual iceberg order because it's not the same order being reloaded. It's different orders that are being added to the queue. So this information can be useful if you trade icebergs because if there's going to be a native iceberg, you're not going to want to put yourself behind it because you're probably going to be in the back of the queue and you're never going to be executed. So if you want to balance this down, you should sell market. With synthetic icebergs instead, you can easily put a limit order here because the rest of the synthetic iceberg orders are going to be reloaded in the back of the queue. So you have more chances to get in field and this will earn you a one tick difference, which can seem like it's not a lot. But if you place your stop loss right at the tick above and say you're going to put a tick profit here, this trade will be a like one to three, one to four. This trade will be a one to two. This is one way in which MBO data can help us. The biggest real concrete help it can have is in this little detail of iceberg orders. So it can give you a higher advantage on trading icebergs and absorptions. So if you are a book scalper or a microstructure order flow scalper, this can be useful. If you're a beginner in order flow, this probably is not the first thing you want to focus on. I mainly explain this to you so that you really understand every granular detail of market mechanics before we move on with the course. But for the price you pay to get this information, you already need to be an experienced trader and you specifically need to be a scalper, a very short term trader. Otherwise, if you simply want to use order flow and volumes to get higher probability triggers for your intraday strategy, I would say that investing $100 per month just for this data feed is a bit excessive, not really useful. So platforms like these ones, which I will present to you very soon with MBO data feed can summarize all these information with you in a chart that we will learn how to use in the next videos. So remember to subscribe to the channel.